All right, guys, welcome back. Another video here. This one is kind of piggybacking off of what I'm doing with Nick's Parallel 6. Uh, Vernon asked about getting more bandwidth in the vehicle in regard specifically to subwoofer enclosures. And with that, I didn't want to make that video even longer. I'm already at 29 minutes with it, and I still have three steps that I want to cover in video to show you guys construction techniques. So with this, we're going to talk about bandwidth subwoofer enclosures and the car and how everything plays together. Now, the first thing to consider is that when you go in and you buy a subwoofer and an amplifier, reality is, is most people are shopping within a budget and they want to buy something within their budget. Uh, something I see here a lot locally is that a lot of guys will buy this amp and this sub and they'll get a prefab enclosure and they'll listen to it and then well I want it louder and where do they always go you guys know they always go to the gain knob and turn the gain knob up because well when I turn the game up when I turn the gain up it gets louder so it's it's better right problem with that is right here any amp and sub combo is only going to produce X amount of output and that's it you don't increase it by turning the gain up this coil is only rated to handle X amount of power. The mechanical suspension of the subwoofer is only rated to handle X amount of power. Once you start reaching the mechanical limits of the, of the soft parts, you can separate your triple joint, stuff like that. You overpower it, you can burn the coils up. We've all seen it. So if you bought this amp and this sub, how do you get more output out of it? You change the enclosure. You go from sealed to ported. You go from ported to a fourth. You go, and when I say fourth, I mean fourth order band pass. Or you go from a fourth to say a sixth. Trick is, is each time you step up from sealed to ported, from ported to fourth, from fourth to six, you increase the size of the enclosure. But typically, you also increase output. And I'm going to show you guys that on the computer. So bandwidth is the range of frequencies, any component, device, any speaker, anything in the audio system, it's the range of frequencies it's capable of playing and handling. So a mid-range you're not going to use as a subwoofer because that's not within the operating bandwidth of that driver. Subwoofer, you're not going to play 20,000 hertz through it, I mean technically you can, but it's not what it's built for. You're going to play low frequencies with it. Tweeters, send sub signals to them, they're cooked. So, <clears throat> excuse me here, the four enclosures, you guys heard me just mention them, that we're going to discuss sealed, ported, fourth order band pass, and we're going to talk about parallel six, obviously. Um, with this, each enclosure design has its own characteristics. If you do a sealed enclosure, you're, you're creating, anytime you create an enclosure, you're creating a high pass filter for that subwoofer in that enclosure. Sealed, it's going to ha have a high pass filter of 12 dB per octave. Ported, 24 dB per octave. It rolls off steeper. So that's something to think about when we're discussing bandwidth because if we're band passing a mid-range, we look at our filters, how steep they are and how quickly it rolls off on that mid-range, right? Same thing happens when you build a sub-enclosure. Uh, other things to discuss here, cabin gain. We, I just said that a 12 dB per octave filter is there when you build a sealed enclosure. But cabin gain typically starts at about 50 hertz, and that's going to increase your output at 12 dB per octave. And that is going to start, that 50 hertz that I'm talking about is something that's referred to as the Schroeder frequency. And the Schroeder frequency is going to be different for every vehicle but it's going to be the frequency where that sound in that vehicle changes from becoming reflective. We know that vehicles are a highly reflective environment. It's going to be the frequency at which sound goes from reflective to resonant or reverberant where that those audio waves stack up in the vehicle. When I say stack up, the wavelength exceeds the length of the vehicle so it gets louder naturally and that's going to happen at about 50 hertz at 12 dB, 12 dB per octave. So from 50 hertz to 25, you should be 12 dB up. 
and that is not a hard and fast rule, it's just a general consensus. Unlike the two to one for a fourth order, don't do that at all. But 50 hertz, 12 dB, that's pretty much a guideline. Kind of like, uh, I don't know, pirate, the pirate code or something from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's not rules, it's guidelines. So um, that is the, the major things here. I had, I had a list of stuff here that I wanted to hit in the introduction. I typically don't do this. I just do it off the cuff and I'm all discombobulated. So bandwidth for enclosure designs, talking about not only the enclosure designs, but the fact that we're creating a high pass filter when we put a subwoofer in an enclosure. Um, other things to consider here before I start, a subwoofer is a, an electromechanical device. We send electricity to it, there are mechanical bits to it, there is a stationary magnetic field. When we send AC signal, which is what we're sending from our amplifiers, when we send AC signal to these leads, we're creating electromagnetic, an electromagnetic field around this coil, and that electromagnetic field reacts with the stationary magnetic field speaker moves, we get wiggly air, we hear it, and we're happy. So since it is an electromechanical device, it operates differently in different enclosures. So the enclosure effectively serves as an air spring behind the subwoofer. So that enclosure is going to affect how this subwoofer performs and something that a lot of people overlook. They will buy a subwoofer, throw it in a pre-built enclosure and go. They will, I've seen guys build beautiful stuff, but they build it and just throw it in a small sealed enclosure and send it. It looks great, it's, it's perfect for pictures, but there's a lot of, I guess, meat left on the table as far as output. So we're gonna look at stuff like that and hopefully you guys will see that there is no one size fits all when it comes to building an enclosure. Uh, even as something as simple as you hear parroted and repeated two to one for a fourth, that is hugely wrong. So we're gonna discuss that stuff and I think at this point I'm gonna stop rambling, get you guys on the computer and we're gonna go through some of the, with the four designs. I'm gonna show you the four designs. I'm gonna show you not only the four designs, but why I'm building this Parallel 6 differently from other Parallel 6 that you've seen where the, the tuning frequencies are different and stuff like that. So let's get to it. All right, guys, I have here the main screen for Term Pro. This is the enclosure design software that I use. Um, I'm gonna go over some basic stuff with you. If you look over here, on the far right, this is my screen capture software, so ignore that, that's not part of, of Term Pro here, and you can see Term Pro there. All right, so with Term Pro, I've got my driver library favorites I've got here. Now, enclosure design, uh, with enclosure design, you have sealed, vented, fourth order bandpass, and you've also got isobaric versions of stuff here. It's kind of useless anymore. Today's subwoofers, there's no need to do isobaric, but they are in the software. So what we're gonna discuss today, we're gonna discuss sealed, vented, a fourth order bandpass, and a parallel sixth order bandpass. Now, if you look right here, you will see tri-bandpass. That just means three chambers and that's tri-band pass fourth where you have sealed chambers and a common vented chamber and tri-band pass meaning three chambers tri and they're all vented because it is a sixth um, uh, between this band pass a regular fourth order band pass and a tri or three chamber band pass the typical two chamber band pass is louder so, and it's also slightly smaller. So I will put two speakers parallel to one another and band pass them in a common chamber. One other thing I wanna discuss on these fourth order band passes, and for some reason, Wayne has 
the motors in the back chamber, the sealed chamber. Always put your motors in the vented chamber, chamber. That way, the airflow in and out of the vented chamber can cool your motors. So, when you're doing a bandpass, that is a consideration. So, sealed, that's the first one we're going to do. And that is the big holy shit 24. We don't want that. We want to SQL 12 because that's what we're working with. And so I've got SQL 12 on my first layer. On the second layer, I've already done over here on the right, you can see layer two, three, and four. I've already modeled enclosures there and we're going to get to those. But I am going to do 4.2 cubic feet right here. Actually, I'm not doing 4.2 cubic feet. What am I doing? Two cubes. You guys will hear that um, you can put an SQL 12 in two cubes sealed. So this is two cubes sealed. That's what that looks like. And so there it is, two cubes sealed. Now. That is going to be great, but you see how much it drops on the low end. Like we're right here at, that's 100 hertz. And it just kind of tapers down. That's great because your cabin gain is going to give you a boost and this is gonna be a very good sound quality enclosure. The trick is, if you want more output, how do you get it? And that is that goes back to what I was saying with having uh, only so much output capability with a, a given amp and sub combo. So if we want more output, we come over here and we increase our power, and that gets us more output. But you know, then you're exceeding thermal limits. So we're going to go ahead and so there's two. But let's do this. Let's go ahead and jump over here. We're going to go ported. And I like doing 2.1 cubes per sub at 21. So there's our enclosure. And we're going to bump up to 1,000 watts. We're back at 1,000 watts. We have a little peak right here at 22 hertz. Not bad. You know, this this is going to have much more output than the um, sealed did. Remember the sealed just tapered off. I've only got four layers here guys but if you go back and look all right so we're at right here we are at 116.5 at 40. You guys can look over here this will show frequency SPL. All of the modeling that this does here is anechoic so that means in a chamber where there are no echoes, no reverberant anything, no cabin gain. So we're gonna go back to two. And at 40, we're at 114. You can see it there. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do our 4.2 at 21. So this is typically what I do. If I do a single sub, a single SQL 12, I will do 2.1 at 21. And then after break-in, they look a lot like this. Nice and smooth. I and mean, we're talking where 115.7 here and 116.6 there. So there really is no EQ to be done on these other than what happens when the cabin gain comes into play and how this enclosure interacts with your vehicle. Uh, in Jones, I built this enclosure for Jones and uh, he did not need any EQ on this sub. It was phenomenal. So there it is. This is the ported enclosure that um, everybody talks about. Oh, the Jason Carter enclosure. This is it. It's 2.1 at 21 or uh, 4.2 at 21 if you're using two. Just 2.1 times the number of subs and just keep tuning it to 21. So here we are, ported. Okay, that's cool. That's a great little SQ enclosure. But what if we want more? So now we're going to jump to layer two here. And obviously this is more. 
and you can see over here on the left our enclosure design has changed this is a fourth order bandpass we have our sealed chamber and our vented chamber our sealed chamber is 1.56 our front chamber is 0.683 and the reason the software did this I did this intentionally I mean I can change this stuff uh, I can go one and you can see what happens so that's something I want to point out to you guys when people say two to one ratio on a fourth order what they're typically referring to is twice the size of this sealed side over here let's say the sealed side is one cube and in the software that's what they call the back chamber so we're going to make the sealed side two cubes because we're running two SQLs we got two subs here and they will say yeah make make the vented side twice that so we're going to go four cubes guys watch how horrendous this looks that is designed to play 34 hertz like nobody's business so yeah nobody wants to do that so we're going to come down to the bottom there are three um, basic enclosure designs that not designs but parameters that term lab will meet flat flat will give you 0.707 okay that is going to, that's your maximally flat response for this subwoofer trick is, is we have 0.68 cubic feet here on the front chamber I already know if I'm doing a 12 and I'm over here working on this dimension my vent is going to be 13 and a half inches tall because that's the, a nice um, that's a nice uh, height to package a 12 in so we've got 0.683 cubic feet tuned to 36 now 36 isn't extremely low that's where a lot of your prefab enclosures are tuned to is 35 or so but look what happens we take this 13 and a half inch tall port we make it two inches wide and its length needs to be 77 and what 13 16 long that's that's you know astronomical so and I'm doing two look what happens if I decide oh I want to go two and a half it's 97 and 13 16 so this is just not feasible we're not going to do this um, and if I make again like if I increase this front chamber dimension let's say I make it three cubes and I make this back chamber say four cubes well it's it's peaky and I can you know watch this I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what happens I increase the chamber volume for the sealed side and that suspension of air back here on the sealed side just lowers your output so we're gonna go lowers it as far as frequency it shifts so this is just not good we're not going to do this so we're going to hit flat so we have this for comparison this is maximally flat completely unfeasible to build because 0.683 cubic feet tuned to 36 is a transatlantic port so that is layer two fourth order band pass now layer three Layer 3 looks pretty promising, doesn't it? Look at all the output we have here. And that output is, wow, all the way up to 80 hertz. We're matching where we were. This is our ported line here. And we're matching it there. The fourth order uh, with the ported, it matched up at 65. It's not bad, right? But look at this parallel 6. So... Parallel 6, we're at 4.560 cubic feet. We could ignore the 6, though. We'll just call it 4.5. Tuned to 19, okay? We're tuned to 19 hertz. Well, that is the low side of our parallel 6. We look at the front chamber. So we're going to call this the back chamber right here. On the parallel 6, your back chamber is going to be larger. So it makes sense to put the motor in the back chamber because that's where it's going to be tuned low that's where you're going to have the most airflow that is the back chamber of the enclosure now this will be your front chamber 
and that's what we're going to work with right here. Front chamber is, you know, one in nine thousandths of a cubic foot. We're going to call that one, and we're going to build for one. So, frequency of the port on that one is 40 hertz. And guys, an octave, if you take 20 hertz and double it, you're at 40 hertz. I had somebody say that what I'm designing for Nick is unconventional because typically you will see the tuning frequency on the sixth an octave apart. So this doesn't look bad, right? I mean, F3 high pass, remember I told you guys we're building high pass filters into our system? F3 high pass, F3 is where you are 3 dB down. We're 3 dB down at 20 hertz. I, I can live with that, cool, who cares? And then F3 low pass, and when we're referring to low pass, when we low pass the subwoofer, we're playing from this point down. When we high pass, it's from a point up. So we've created a band pass, just like we would band pass a mid-range in our system when we're doing tuning on, uh, on the processor. We have band passed the output of our subwoofer and that is band width, right? How, how much playable information do we have here? So I look at this and I go, hmm, okay, that's not bad, but you know, 40, mm, can we do better? And we can, and that's where this enclosure that I'm building for Nick comes into play. I want you guys to pay attention. We got 4.560 cubic feet tuned to 19. We've got one in nine thousandths cubic feet tuned to 40. Guys, the only thing that's going to change when I go to this next layer over here, layer number four, is going to be right here. I'm going to change the tuning frequency of this chamber right here. I'm not going to change the enclosure volume. I'm not going to change anything about this back chamber. This back chamber determines how low we play. That back chamber determines this okay now when I change this front chamber again I'm not changing the enclosure volume the only thing I'm going to change here is this the 40 Hertz and that is going to change when I change that 40 Hertz it's going to change this port right here on that front chamber so here we go layer 4 guys we've got so much more output look at that we've matched right here all right, this matches with our previous sixth order because we're at the same 4.56 cubic feet tuned to 19. So this changes, it just comes up higher, okay? Now what happened when I went from 40 to 78 is I got more bandwidth, okay? I got more bandwidth. Not only did I get more bandwidth, guys, I got more output. So if I jump back, and the thing about this is I can click right here. We're at, at, let's say 40 hertz. 40 hertz is a popular frequency, people like it. I'm at 129, 40 hertz, I'm at 129.2 dB. Now, I go to layer four, which is my parallel six, and at 40 hertz, I'm at 132, okay? So I've got more output there, but this is just more output across the board and if you look I'm going to turn off look at the difference between that ported enclosure and this parallel 6 I'm sitting right here at 132.4 dB at 40 Hertz with the parallel 6 that's 132.4 and we're at 116.5 so quite the jump and guys remember 10 db is perceived as twice as loud so we go from you know 116 to 132 and then right here at 50 we're at 116.4 up to 133.8 so we have much more output and if we look at bandwidth okay Remember, this, all of this is anechoic. This output that you see does not have cabin gain factored in at all. So 
Enclosure frequencies over here, we have F3 high pass. This is our 3 dB down point of this parallel 6, meaning where is it 3 dB down? 3 dB down. If we put a crossover on um, uh, link widths like a 6, 12, 18, 24, your X number of dB down at that frequency. So we're 3 dB down at 21 and 60. Not horrible, but we're at 19 and 78 on tuning. So it's unconventional, but if we again turn on the one octave tuning that a lot of people do, you see we have more bandwidth, and not only more bandwidth, we have more overall output. This is all right here, free output. And typically, when you get more out. All right, guys, my camera shut off on me at thermal. So what I was saying is typically when you get an increase in output, it means your enclosure size has changed. If we go back and, and look, we were at 4.2 cubic feet here for our ported enclosure. And then we jumped up to this fourth and this we didn't increase but it's not even feasible to build and uh, so we're going to turn that one off and then we're going to jump over here to the single uh, one octave apart parallel six we jumped up quite a bit but we're at five and a half cubic feet of ported chamber volume between the two chambers now usually what happens is you go larger with the enclosure volume you end up with more output but we didn't do that here all we did was change this tuning frequency over here on the left and we got not only more output like right here we're at 50 hertz we're at 133.8 and then at 50 on this one we are at 25.9 we'll call it 26 so We've got more output with the higher tuned parallel six. This dip right here, we're at 131.6 and the highest peak is 33.8. But again, cabin gain still comes into play. So at 50 hertz or so, you know, it's not a hard set in stone rule, more of a generalization, you're gonna see a 12 dB per octave increase. So that's what we're looking at the waves are going to stack up in the vehicle and you get louder that's the basics of it so there it is we have this sixth and again if i switch between three and four you guys look right here tuning frequency of 40 and this is what we have we change this one all we change again is this tuning frequency. It jumps up to 78. And not only does the tuning frequency jump up, but our output jumps up. So I want to go ahead and click right here and let you guys see just how that looks as it changes. So, you know, we're coming up to, coming up, coming up, coming up. We can go more, but notice it just kind of stops here, doesn't it? It doesn't want to really get much louder. So there's no benefit to going stupid silly with the tuning frequency. So we come up to 78. You're going to get this dip in here. And it gets really pronounced if you try doing even like crazier stuff. So if we come over here, look at that. Right? That's just, uh, why would you do that? So we're going to come over here. 19 is manageable. It's not horrible. And then again, we're 31.6, 33.8. You know, it's it's not within EQ if you had to do it. It's nothing that couldn't be just dialed out quickly with an EQ. But this, once cabin gain comes in, you're not even going to notice it. You probably won't even touch EQ on this, tell you the truth. So that is the basics of getting more bandwidth in the vehicle. Again, people there's there's two things people want when they buy a subwoofer one is typically unlike Verdon's question where hey how do I get more bandwidth typically they want more output and they will go to that gain and just turn stuff up and turn stuff up and clip 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 
cook coils drive the motor past its, uh, the, they'll drive the sub past its mechanical limits, they'll have triple joint failures, stuff like that. So I want to look at right here, this is 20 hertz and up. This is good. I mean, when we listen to music, we're looking for 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. They say that's the range of our, you know, of human hearing. So this isn't horrible. Now, if we look at, I'm not even going to click on two because that's that horrible fourth, but I will take that horrible fourth that we can't really build. And I'm just going to make this sealed. And we're going to put that at two cubes. So this is our difference between ported and sealed. So let's say you've got that amplifier. And again, remember when you look at this, there's no cabin gain in. So at 50 hertz, we're going to see an increase in output. So this isn't going to be down here like this. We're going to see an increase in output below around 50 hertz. But so that's what we're going to get out of two SQL12s with 1,000 watts applied to each subwoofer. Problem is, we taper off here on the low end. And if you want that to get the output down here, what you need to do is come up on power. Now, the great thing about a sealed enclosure is you can do that because the impedance rise is so great in a sealed enclosure that you're not going to see. If you put a 1,000 watt amplifier on it, you're not going to see a full 1,000 watts on it. So you could put a 2K um, on each sub and, and be happy with it. So a 3K on a pair of SQL12s is about perfect when you're running them sealed. But uh, let's go back to that ported enclosure. So right here, I'm going to look at where that peak is. We're at 22 hertz. We're at 118.1 dB. We jump back over to our sealed enclosure at 22. And we're at 107.6. Again, a 10 dB difference is perceived as twice as loud to our ears. So that is the benefit of running ported if you just want more low end output. Now, that comes at the expense of 4.2 cubic feet ported, tuned to 21. So your enclosure is going to be larger than uh, than that and we're going to go ahead right here and I'm going to show you just how big that needs to be our height again we're going to go 13.5 for a ported enclosure and let's try two and a half wide now it says that our this right here is your vent air velocity and this is looking at vent air velocity with a square flange or square opening on the port as you as you uh, build ports, the air flowing in and out of here, in and out of this port, if there's an abrupt transition from the face of this port to the inner walls, that is a point for turbulence to happen. So that turbulence is what people will hear as port noise or chuffing. And when you have a higher velocity in your vent, you're more susceptible to having port noise. So a way to mitigate that is to run a radius, or I run an elliptical radius on the inside of the mouth of the port on the baffle. And on the back side here, I will run just a simple roundover bit. So at 13 and a half inches tall, that's this dimension, and two and a half inches wide, we're at 43.9. We'll call it 44 inches long. And that's not um, difficult to do in an enclosure for one of these. So again, back chamber, 4.2 cubes. We've got tuning frequency of 21. This is our internal vent dimensions. Now, this is where it gets fun in enclosure design. Look at our total enclosure volume. Six cubes for 212s ported. And that six cubes comes from the fact that we have to account for this guy, our port. Uh, what your port does not count as enclosure volume. It actually subtracts from enclosure volume 
and you need to treat your port like a solid object. So there is our six cube enclosure for 212s. So that 4.2 cubes seems nice. We tune it to 21 where they're gonna love to play. They'll play everything for you. Single digits will come easy with this ported setup. And you're gonna have much more low end output than you would have sealed. So uh, yeah, F3 high pass of 18. Remember high pass, we are building a 24 dB high pass filter when we build a ported enclosure. So let's look back at our um, sealed enclosure, two cubes. And guys, there is no vent, so this is two cubes, that's it. The ported enclosure to get that, uh, what was it, 11.8 dB increase here at this spot, it costs us an additional four cubes of airspace. And then we jump over here, there's our parallel six that is one octave apart, slightly over, one cycle over. So that is the output there. And again, we're at four and a half cubes and then one cube and the, uh, let's see, vent design for, that's front chamber. I wanna do back chamber. I'm gonna show you guys just how much this comes into play, 13.5. All right, hold on now, work with me. 13.5, and we're gonna go 3.5. That's what I did in this one. So there is that port. Now we're gonna go to the front side, and you guys are gonna yell at me for this, but I'll allow it. 13.5, look at that, 13.5, seven inches wide, it wants 148. I'm gonna go 1.5. Okay, 13.5, 1.5, 1.9 to 40. I don't want 40, I want 78. So that's another thing. You guys, we had 40, though our single octave. So we're looking at a 29 inch long port on our high side, okay? So that's just not cool. But let's go ahead and look at the wood design. So our total cubic feet here, total enclosure volume is nine cubes, okay? We're gonna go back and we're gonna hit our other enclosure where the only change is our tuning frequency of 78. So vent design on the back side, we're gonna go with our same 13.5, 13.5. We're gonna go three and a half wide, 3.5 wide, and look at that, 71. Now we're gonna go on our front side, and we're gonna go 13.5, and we are gonna go with 1.5, and this again is tuned to 78. So we're looking at a length of like 5.1 inches overall for our port. That's manageable. So we've got a much more manageable port here to build. Our vent velocity isn't horrible. Um, and oh, by the way, we have more output and more bandwidth. But let's go over here. We're at nine cubes. We're at nine cubes total on the enclosure volume. So that's not horrible. And of course, these dimensions can change. Uh, I think let's do 42. And then the height was 15. And the depth I did, yeah, there's 30.5. So total enclosure volume is nine cubes. So nine cubes on this guy. We were at, gosh, I can't remember, guys. On the single octave, it's also nine cubes. So same enclosure size, and we're getting more output and more bandwidth. So that is what I was wanting to show you guys. Vernon asked that question, and I just, I couldn't include this in the, uh, 
video for the Parallel 6, obviously. You guys can see why. It just goes on and on. But there is no there is no simple answer as to, as to getting more bandwidth because when Nick asked about, hey, um, what should I go with? Uh, he was told that a fourth would, would have more bandwidth and more output and a, um, gosh, I would have to pull it up. Let me, actually, I'm going to pull it up here. Um, as soon as as soon as things want to cooperate here. So we're going to go back to the owner's group. Give me just a second here, guys. And uh, all right. All right, so Nick says he has two SQLs and he's having a hard time deciding between a fourth order for large bandwidth, and I'm sure this is where Vernon's um, question came in, or a ported enclosure. So you guys see the difference between the ported and the uh, um, fourth, and then you see the difference between ported and a sixth. Uh, you can't do ported or a fourth for the SQL. It's it's difficult, and you have to tune them higher. Um, and it's not a fault of the sub. It's just they work so great in such a small size enclosure that when you start doing, uh, I don't I don't call force exotic, but when you start doing the more exotic enclosures like a fourth for one. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated and more difficult, more tedious to build. So uh, when people say that, that forests are hard, it's kind of for that reason because there's more engineering and thinking that has to go in to get it right. Um, sealed, ported, all day, every day, people can hammer them out. The great thing about a parallel six is the low side on that parallel six is typically just the ported enclosure for that sub. If you know you look at the go back and look at the uh, the graphs, I was going to do 4.2 at 21 for two of them in a ported enclosure. You could absolutely do that for the parallel six, and then just do the high side. A parallel six is nothing more than two separate ported enclosures. You've got your baffle and a ported enclosure from the baffle this way, and then on the front side, you've got a baffle and another ported enclosure. If you can design and build a ported enclosure, you can build a parallel sixth. So uh, in that regard, people say that they're difficult, but they're not overly difficult. If you understand how to build a ported, and then you can go, okay, I need this frequency and this frequency, you can build a single enclosure that has two ported chambers and hammer away. And that's for a parallel. Uh, a series six is a whole nother beast. So with a Series 6, you've got one chamber playing into another chamber, and then you have a single port coming from the enclosure like you would on a fourth. And the tuning frequency and volume of one chamber affects the other one. It's, it's more involved. It's more complicated. Parallel 6 is just going to do what it does, and it's much simpler to build and understand. So uh, we go again. Guys, I'm, I'm going to end this here soon. We go again here, uh, F3 high pass of that uh, ported was 18 hertz. And you guys can see here just how much more output it has over this sealed enclosure. And then right here at 13, they intersect and the sealed actually has more output below 13 hertz. A lot of people would not suspect that. And again, this is anechoic, so if it has more output anechoic, those waves are going to stack up in the vehicle. Um, all of these will. So let's take a look here. This is our single octave. This is tune 19 and 40, parallel 6. And then we have 19, and uh, I'm just pointing here. It's not 19 here. But we've got our enclosure that's tuned to 19 and 78 and there's just more meat on overall from 
gosh, what is this? 22 hertz. 22 hertz, we start coming up, and we've just got more output, you know, at, gosh, that's 24, we are at, let me get it active. At 24 hertz, we're at 129.4 on the single octave apart, and then we're at 132.8. So, not a bad increase. And all we did to get that increase was change the tuning frequency right here on the high side. And so now, for those of you that, that heard people talk about hearing the parallel sixth in the XB, no joke, at one time I had the parallel sixth in there with a single SQL 15. And it was tuned like this, not these specific frequencies, but it was tuned high. And it had a lot of output, it was windy, and at one point, I only had that SQL 15 in parallel 6, and I had M3 carbons laying on shop rags under the factory grills in the dash. They were powered off the radio at crossed over, high passed. The M3s were off the radio at 125 hertz. The parallel 6 was low passed in the radio at 125 hertz, and people swore. I had mid basses playing in the vehicle because everything blended so well together. And, um, you know, that's, that's just one of those crazy things. So when you, when you build something that's tuned high like this at 78, you're going to typically have an electrical crossover in your processor at 80 or 70. And that's going to change the output of this enclosure but it still doesn't change the fact that you have created more output and more bandwidth in the enclosure design. And that goes back to what Vernon was asking. How do you get more bandwidth? And bandwidth is, you know, for you guys, I'm over here, this is my high pass, this is your low pass. Low pass to high pass, 20 hertz up to 20,000, and you're going to band pass drivers, your mid-range, your tweeters are going to get high passed and they're going to play from there up. Your subwoofer is going to play from here down. And I don't like ever putting a high pass on a subwoofer, not electronically, because I feel if our tweeters aren't going to be low pass, we're not going to filter the output of our tweeter. Why would we go to the opposite end of the listening spectrum and hamstring our subwoofers and cut output at 20 hertz or below? Because there is information there. Uh, a lot of people say, well, there's no music below 20 hertz. Pipe organs play down into the teens all the time. And if you've ever been in the Audi or in the XB, you guys will hear that. Not only hear it, but you'll feel that 16 hertz note because everything is just so composed. And you can listen at a volume level where that 16 hertz note just gets in there and shakes you. So... Um, Enclosure design, enclosure design, enclosure design. That's where I start when I want to get bandwidth from a subwoofer in a vehicle. And uh, I know I've kind of rambled on this, but there's just so much to hit and there's so many different areas to, to cover as far as, you know, we're high passing when we build. And a lot of people wouldn't think of it like that. Uh, sealed enclosure is a 12 dB uh, filter on you know, you're applying a 12 db high pass when you build an enclosure for a sealed enclosure when you build a ported enclosure it's 24 db high pass and when you build a band pass guess what you're applying filters on both sides and you guys saw that here instead of seeing that smooth up you know and it never shuts off that type of output it just you know comes up and then just keeps going on the the sealed or the ported with a bandpass, you're applying a filter in construction. It's not an electronic filter. It's a you're you're building it into the system that the subwoofer is operating in. So, often overlooked part of building a system is the sub enclosure, and again, output depends hugely on the enclosure. You can take uh, any amp and sub, get X amount of output in any type of enclosure, but you change that enclosure without spending any more money on equipment, and you can completely change the way that amp and that sub sound in your vehicle. 
So long video, I apologize for that, but Vernon asked, and to me there really was no simple explanation. I wanted to discuss it and go over some of the basics of what we're dealing with here when I got the paper out. And then not only that, I wanted to go back and hammer it in by showing you guys in the software just exactly what happens. And something as simple as changing one frequency on one side of an enclosure can change everything with how that enclosure perform, how that enclosure performs, and not only that, how it will integrate into the rest of your vehicle. Between that transition between sub and mid base is critical. So, again, it's unconventional, and people ask questions about this. Uh, I say it is unconventional, the 19 and 78 tuning. But people ask questions about this. I wanted to explain it. And uh, Vernon, man, I'm, I got a dry throat. I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. If you guys have questions, ask them. I will try to answer if I don't have a dry throat after this. But uh, I'll see you guys next time.